This is the Horse Radio Network. This is Episode 7 of Equestrian Legends. Hello, I'm Chris Stafford, and my guest this week is Italian show jumping star Raimondo Dinzeo. Major Raimondo Dinzeo was born on February 8, 1925, in Poggio Mateto, Italy. The younger of the two famous show jumping brothers, he highlighted his remarkable metier in the sport of show jumping with a gold medal win at the 1960 Rome Olympics, ahead of his brother Piero. His record breaking career spanned four decades during which he was also crowned world champion in 1956 on Murano and in 1960 riding Gower and Girl. In addition to becoming Olympic champion on home soil, he also garnered an individual and team silver plus three team bronze medals at Olympic Games between 1956 and 1972. An officer in the Carabinieri, his distinguished uniform and classical forward seat epitomized Italian show jumping and graced show rings around the world where he achieved 32 Nations Cup wins as well as numerous Grand Prix and Derby victories. Among those most notable were the Grome Grand Prix, which he won five times, and his four wins in the Brussels Grand Prix, as well as the Hamburg Derby. One of his favourite hunting grounds was the Royal Dublin Show, at which he won altogether 55 classes. Some of his most famous partners included Posillipo, Bellevue, Fiorello, The Quiet Man and Gone Away. An inspiration to show jumping riders around the world, he had a specific influence on the teaching of his close friend Bertolin de Nemethy, the Hungarian-born coach of the U.S. equestrian team from 1955 to 1980 and coach to Bill Steinkraus, Frank Chapeau, Kathy Kusner and many other U.S. legends. Ramondo Dinzeo is married and has two children. Ramondo, it's a great personal pleasure to welcome you to the show, having watched you compete in the prime of your riding career and, of course, to see you still attending the Rome show each year to catch up with your old friends. I'd like to begin, though, with your early years, where you were born and grew up. Ma io sono nato a Roma, a Poggio Milteto, in provincia di Roma, dove c'erano i nonni. E poi l'infanzia è stata sempre ambientata con l'odore di cavalli in famiglia, perché papà era in pieno coinvolto con, con l'equitazione. He was born in Poggio Milteto, which is a small town north of Rome, because that was the house where his grandparents lived. And uh, from his childhood, he started immediately smelling horses because his father was very much involved in uh, equitation and riding and teaching. Give me a picture of what it was like growing up with your brother. Eravamo bravi perché eravamo con la disciplina di papà, perciò ero bravo. He said that they, they were both very good and they behaved because they were born with the discipline of his military father. What would be your fondest memories then of growing up as a young boy? I ricordi più vivi sono quando papà andava a vedere mio padre che montava. When I went to see his father riding, that he remembers very well. With your father and brother being horsemen, was there an expectation for you to follow in their footsteps? Io in principio avevo un po' paura dei cavalli, di montare a cavallo. Poi il fatto che Piero già aveva cominciato a montare mi ha spinto a provare. E una volta provato sono continuato. He says that at the very beginning he was scared of horses, but then... The fact that his older brother Piero had started riding convinced him that he should try as well to emulate his brother, and then he never looked back. But the first time he sat on a horse, he was scared, therefore he gave up immediately. And then when he went home, he 
his brother Piero and his father kept talking among themselves and didn't, and didn't care about him. And they, they were talking horses all the time. Then this drove him mad so that he, he, he wanted to try as well and made an effort to, to win, to conquer his fears. Let's talk about your education now. Where did you go to school? Io sono andato a scuola in un collegio e anche lì avevo seguito sempre gli studi con disciplina, quindi non è che ero bravissimo, però per una questione di disciplina non sono mai stato bocciato. He, he went to a college uh, from the beginning and uh, he was a very disciplined uh, scholar and therefore he just he, he was not brilliant but he studied just enough to be always promoted to the next class what was expected of you when you left school not forgetting of course that this was wartime in europe and italy was under german occupation Vivevamo la giornata perché sempre con la paura che ci prendessero. Was it during this time that you joined the Carabinieri? No, dei Carabinieri sono passato dopo. Io prima io ho cominciato, ero so, il servizio di prima nomina l'ho fatto in Savoia. He joined the army first and the first appointment he had was a lieutenant in the regiment Savoia Cavalleria. Uh, which was the which is the the oldest and the most prestigious uh, cavalry regiment he then switched uh, to the carabinieri because that's a that's a normal passage that you do that you had to do in italy you coming from the army you could uh, you could ask to join the carabinieri which is some sort of military police and uh, he lived uh, in this year the, there was the German occupation in uh, in Italy, and uh, he said that, that, that they were always uh, fearing the Germans who came and arrested people without a reason and brought them to Germany to concentration camps and things like that. What was your role during the war? Milano, perché avevo l'illusione di studiare, perché avevo preso ingegneria. E siccome non è che mi mandava ad ammazzarmi dalla voglia di studiare, poi piano piano sono entrato, ho cominciato a contatto con i cavalli e, e ho lasciato gli studi e, e, ho continuato, e ho continuato a montare molto lì a Milano, a San Siro. When the war broke, he was in Milan at the beginning because he had started studying engineering at the Milan uh, University, but then... Uh, the, he felt that he did not have enough wish to, to, to keep studying and he started getting involved with horses and he started riding in Milan in San Siro where, where there was a big uh, riding center and he joined the army immediately. How did you overcome your fear of horses in those early days then before you had to work with horses? Come ha superato la paura dei cavalli per prim- dei, dei primissimi tempi? La paura dei cavalli l'ho superata, te l'ho detto, perché un po' a casa mi avevano isolato, perché papà aveva vergogna di me che avevo avuto paura con i cavalli. Quindi è stata una forza di volontà mia di riprovare e continuare. Tanto che è stata un po' per quello la mia scelta di prendere gli studi eh, di ingegneria. Ma poi quando sono venuto a Milano, ti ricordi che abbiamo montato pure insieme qualche volta? Con mio padre? Sì, eh, sì. montavamo in corsa insieme con papà. E allora e... sai, lavora, eh, allora ho il cavallo o la, o la scuola? E, eh, io ho preferito continuare con i cavalli. He overcame the fear of forces by pure will force and Piero has somehow isolated him. So he made the point of uh, trying to win the fears and uh, uh, start riding. And when he was in Milan, he even um, um, he, he went to ride whichever, to, 
he took whatever possibility to ride and he even race road and he rode with my father he, he, he remembers it well that they rode races together but then he said in the end I realized that riding was what I wanted to do and certainly not studying to become an engineer in those younger days of formative years uh, during the military and before you joined the Carabinieri, you would have ex- been exposed to a lot of very, very established horsemen and other mentors, people that would have influenced your life. Um, who were they and how did they influence your career? Okay. His father and Colonel Bettoni uh, were his models. Colonel Bettoni was a famous rider uh, before the war. And did you find, because you had a brother who was a successful rider, that it made you competitive and live up to your brother and your father? He said that they were very competitive, and we, we all know that they were all their lives. <laughs> what did you perceive to be your greatest strengths and weaknesses when you were riding? He says his main strength was that he was humble. So humbleness and not vanity, which is the disease which affects the current riding world. What did you most value about your career with horses, with all the successes, the, all the Olympic medals that you achieved? What was the most valuable aspects of your life with horses? He says all wins. <laughs> <laughs> and of which accomplishments are you most proud? Is that the same answer? Is it, is it the wins? Yeah. Or which of those classes? Was it just the Olympic successes? Or was it much more than that in your influence on the horse world in Italy and internationally? He says that he, alert, he has ridden many races and um, his discipline on horseback started from the racehorse trainers which were very strict uh, teachers and he's very grateful to those uh, people that he met in the racing world uh, which helped him a lot. Uh, and taught him a lot, uh, especially about discipline and commitment. How do you regard the horse world today, and what impression does it have on you? Quello che mi dà più fastidio, te l'ho detto, è la vanità di questi cavalieri di oggi, perché basta che fanno un piazzamento, subito si ritengono dei parlatori cominciano a parlare siccome io ho seguito sempre un grande istruttore che era l'istruttore della squadra americana Stein Kraus e allora vedevo con che disciplina insegnava Stein Kraus e ne facevo tesoro per me he, he says that what annoys him is the vanity of the uh, modern riders because these are people that get a place in a, in a in a competition, and then they start talking and uh, patronizing and teaching uh, other people. He says he's, he was a, a keen follower and, and a good friend of William Steinkraus, and uh, he learned a lot from the way that Steinkraus kept all these people quiet and, 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 taught, and taught them how to be humble. Quello che si fa adesso è una falsità di impegno. Perché oggi purtroppo c'è troppo denaro che circola. Io quando siamo nei concorsi conquisto più 
insieme sono proprio i cavalieri americani, siamo molto amici con George Morris e poi, e poi perché fanno lo sport e poi io ho avuto il piacere di fare uno stage negli Stati Uniti e, e trovo che ho ammirato la disciplina di, di quei ragazzi americani che hanno fatto lo stage con me la serietà del lavoro che è la cosa che piace più da me there's too much money involved and people want to get results too fast uh, for their means he is a very good friend he says it, that he is a very good friend of George Morris and he had the pleasure of making a, some stages in the United States and he admired the way that the Americans in that, at that time with the likes of George Morris and Stan Krauss, took riding very seriously. Did you have a life motto uh, that has helped you with your life as a horseman over the years? Anything that has shaped your values? <laughs> He says it's not easy. How did you overcome adversity in the sport when you were a competitor? E i problemi ne venivano tanti e si superavano con la passione del lavoro dei cavalli. The problems there were many and frequently, but he only over, could overcome them with the passion and fondness of the work done with horses. Did anything intimidate you as a rider? No, come cavaliere no, mi intimidiva non, eh, non rispettare le norme dell'equitazione, quello mi intimidiva, che avevo sempre paura di fare delle azioni non corrette per le, quello che riguarda l'equitazione. There is nothing which intimidated him on a horseback. The only thing he feared was to break the rules of good riding, his seat and the, the actions that he did on a horse. Il, il mio lavoro era sempre ispirato dall'amore per il cavallo e soprattutto dal rispetto per il cavallo. His work on horseback was always inspired by his love and respect for, for the horse. Do you have a sense of how you have impacted the sport over the years and, it, and the horse world? Beh, questa è stata una delle più grandi gioie nostre perché vuol dire che abbiamo svolto un lavoro giusto e buono la ragione per cui io adesso ammiro i cavalieri che ammiro di più sono proprio quelli della squadra americana perché sono gli unici che montano con i principi nostri che vengono da Caprivi the fact that they were considered the, the, the best interpreters of the Caprilli style, uh, it, it's a great source of pride and joy uh, because they felt that this was the right way uh, to ride. Today, it, they are very happy to see, the, especially the American show jumpers, who are the only team who, as a team, follow those principles of classical riding uh, to the letter, I mean, in, in the best possible way in the world. E digli specialmente dei cavalieri americani, le amazzo gli americani, che montano meglio degli uomini, eh? And he says that he especially appreciates... Ci facciamo un po' di nemici. Women riders who are better than men in the United States team. <laughs> I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the other side of life. Um, being Italian, of course, you will have an appreciation for music and literature and the arts. How has that played a part in your life? Sì, la musica, la musica. Infatti, la io musica. quando lavoro i cavalli dentro di me canto sempre. <laughs> he says that when, when, he, when he trains a horse or in, between himself he, he keeps singing e soprattutto appunto per seguire la musica perché il montare a cavallo bene è musica trovo I reminded him that he once told me that the best physical training for, for horse riding 
was to go dancing. He said, because that teaches you the rhythm and riding a horse is like playing a music play, or playing to a music. Do you play any, or did you ever play any musical instruments? No, io, mia madre si era ostinata quando ero piccolo a farmi studiare il violino perché Piero ha studiato il pianoforte e allora a me non mandava di suonare il pianoforte ma ha fatto studiare il violino, però è stato, sono diventato una frana e allora pure lì ho lasciato. When they were children... Musica, specialmente la musica classica che la musica moderna, quella ballabile, perché andavo spesso con mia moglie a ballare, anche durante Piazza di Siena la sera andavamo sempre, ci trovavamo in qualche posto con i nostri amici e andavamo a ballare. Ballare fa molto bene per seguire i cavalli molte volte. When they were children, his mother made a point for Piero to study piano and since he didn't want to do what his brother did, he took the violin and studied it for a few years, but then discovered that he was no good at all for it. But he says he kept loving music and especially classic music, but also modern uh, music, dance music. And he said that often during Piazza di Siena, which is the big Rome show every year in May, uh, he kept uh, inviting friends also from the other teams and he went dancing with the, with the, he took everybody dancing with his wife and these other riders and enjoyed himself uh, a lot because he, he, he repeated that riding a horse is like playing to a music. <laughs> what entertains you then and makes you laugh? Is it just music? Musica è, il, è come sport, il football, un po' tutti gli sport, ma soprattutto il football. Music and uh, soccer. Oh, he says he, like, he likes all sports, but especially soccer. He's a fan of Juventus. I'd like to talk you know, a little bit about your family and your wife, when you met your wife and, and where you were ma- when and where you were married and your children. Mia moglie l'ho incontrata proprio una sera... In un ballo, a un ballo dopo Piazza di Siena. <laughs> he met his wife at the dancing exactly during the show of Piazza di Siena in Rome. And what year was that and where did you get married? Aspetta, aspetta, aspetta un attimo, non lo ricordo, vediamo un po'. Ma più, più o meno. È <laughs> 53 e io ho avuto, ho avuto tre figli. Purtroppo ne sono rimasti due perché la prima l'ho perduta in un incidente di sci. He has had three children, but unfortunately the first, a girl, Alessandra, died in a ski accident in the 70s. Sì, mia figlia, la seconda, ha due, due, due ragazzi. Io gli dico bambini, ah. ma hanno ormai uno 18 anni e uno ce n'ha 19, quindi... L'unica della famiglia che monta è mia nipote, la figlia di mia figlia. His uh, second daughter uh, has two children who are now 17 and 18 and the youngest is the only one that rides in the family today. Alessandra è la prima, la seconda è Susanna. Sì. Susanna. E il basso è Guido. Susanna and Guido are his uh, other Guido. children. And who has been your biggest supporter and what does that mean to you? Sì, no, appassionati sono tutti. La figlia di Susanna, sì, è la più appassionata, sì. si chiama Raimonda. Forse c'è il nome la rovinata. Today, I mean, everybody's fond of horses and they were very, always very... But uh, today is the, his granddaughter, who is called Raimonda. As he jokes, he says, th- with that name, uh, it's not an advantage for her. Are you reading at the moment? Are there any books that you prefer? Do you, write, do you read about horse, horses still? No, libri di cavalli, sì, ti ho tutti i libri di cavalli, di cavalli di quelli che riguardano Cavrilli l'ho letto un po' tutti e poi e mi piacciono molto i libri di storia infatti adesso sto leggendo la vita di Garibaldi è molto fond of all the 
the horse books, the riding books uh, of Caprilli and uh, his uh, contemporary uh, writers of, of that period, the turn of the century, 1819th. And uh, but he likes in general uh, history books and is is reading now the life of Garibaldi. And do you still go to Piazza di Siena and watch the show each year now and, and or other shows? And and if you do go to Piazza di Siena, what do you most enjoy about it in today's sport? Forse perché voglio vedere se se chi è che monta perché non mi piace vedere brutte brutti cavalieri e se vado vado sì. giusto per vedere vedere rivedere un po' il mio amico Morris che certamente verrà con i cavalieri americani perché ci facciamo sempre delle chiacchierate dei vecchi tempi he will go there to check on the general quality of riding because he's curious to to every year is curious to see what happens and uh, he is looking forward to meet George Morris with whom he spends entire afternoons discussing the old times and the uh, sit- the general situation of uh, riding and techniques in, in in the world how would you like to be remembered as a horseman given the influence that you've had on equestrian sport for many years come, come l'uomo di cavalli con simpatia vorrei essere ricordato con simpatia e come cavaliere anche l'importante è di essere simpatici che essere bravi he, is, he wants to be remembered as a horseman and as a rider uh, as a, a sympathetic person because he feels that it is it's better to be sympathetic uh, with people than to be to to have been a good a good rider. He says that's more important for him that well, people like. Well, that leads me to my final question. Given the differences in the sport over the years, how the sport has changed, what advice would you give to young people who are thinking of a career in the horse world? Soprattutto, oltre che seriamente. E lo dovrebbe fare con amore per i cavalli perché oggi gente che ama i cavalli ce n'è più poca he, he says that on top of doing it very seriously he would recommend that he did everything with uh, love for the horses because that nowadays there is very few people who really love loves horses dire che mi ho parlato solo con uh, con loro perché stimo molto la, gli, gli cavalieri americani e anche in casa mia la fotografia che, che troneggia di più in salotto a casa mia è una fotografia della squadra americana di alcuni anni fa che mi hanno regalato con la loro firma, la loro dedica e che è la cosa che troneggia in, in mio salotto dunque c'è in primo piano c'è eh, l'istruttore, lì come si chiama? Ten Kraus. Poi c'è Chapeau, eh, eh, George Morris, ragazzino. Uh, Hugh Wiley. Hugh Wiley. He says it's the picture he likes most of, of the many he has. Ah, quello che, che è divertente è che io ho una... una eh, Cineteca di film, eh, perché la cosa che mi divertono molto di più a proposito di, di leggere, di cultura, sono i film western. E eh, ce n'ho una, un centinaio. He has a collection of over 100 cowboy film, cowboy movies and, <laughs> and western movies, because he loves them and he, ha- he, he owns more than 100. I want to thank you so much for spending time with uh, us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you to you. Please join me again next time when we celebrate the life of another equestrian legend. Mm-hmm.